It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. Coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today, two NFC clubs going head-to-head -head as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gunn joined in the booth by Charles Davis. That's CD. These Falcons seem to be in an interesting spot coming into 2023. They've seemingly got playmakers galore on offense, but they may only be as good as what their defense can do for them. And that defense, 27th overall in the league last year, so they must improve. In order to help them, though, they're going to try and control the ball more on the offensive side, try and run it a little bit more and take some time off the clock. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. Florida Atlantic man Greg Joseph ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Atlanta. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense. And at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season, and he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. Ritter looking to put it up right away. And his first pass is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Ritter from the gun. And caught by London. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Ritter throwing on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. Oh, the return is Powell. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season, his best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. Play action now, Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot.
First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Here's second and 10. Throwing his cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. To throw, Cousins. Gets this into the hands of Nikhil Harry. 19 yards is the pick up there, but even with that, they're well short. It's fourth down. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. And that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain, still a ways to go, though. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way in the end zone now for a touchback. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. <laughs> just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Here's the eighth overall pick from Texas. It's B. John Robinson. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. On play action, here's Ritter. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz able to get the sack. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer and a big play here on third and long following the sack. He'll look to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Only able to gain a couple there. And it'll be fourth down. What we hear so often, how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Here's Powell on the return. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides, each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Cousins throw here into the hands of Harry. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and three at the 46-yard line. 
clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On second down, this is Madison. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third and two. Throwing. Cousins. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. to start it out. Robinson. And he'll run the full about six up across the 20 to the 22. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. So second and four from the 22. Ritter will set up to throw it. His throw here's incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Ritter. sack. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to it. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 46. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Now a second and ten. They'll go Madison up the middle. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here comes third down and seven. Now Cousins. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. 
So the completion there, but Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Here's Madison running on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 24 now, here's second down and seven. Going to run with Madison again. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. From the red zone now, Cousins. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. But that's Grady Jarrett who forced his way through to register the sack. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. If you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Touchdown! Alexander Madison. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Vikings will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's polished up by a Viking score. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Ritter now. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be knocked to the turf right there as he gets it up to the 43. 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Back to throw, Ritter. And that's incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and five. Ritter. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 15. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. And I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On third down, Cousins. And he's got his man on the out route. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain. When they Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get Previous one. Play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. After review of the play, ruling on the field. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. 
See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And a pretty good burst there as he gets this across midfield and down to the 46. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Ritter with it after the play fake. and they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. Robinson up the middle. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 25, here's second and six. They'll run again here with Robinson. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They have punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Option play. Here's Robinson. And strong running there as he's inside the ten and down to the eight-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. On second down, Ritter. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Quarterback in 101. Never force the ball into double coverage. Especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. And Ritter back to throw. This will be caught at about the six. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. Cool knocks this one through the post. So the long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they set up for just the field goal. But I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field as we eat closer and closer to intermission Charles remember last time out they punted 
They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Holding offense. Well, we're not just going to go. We're not playing. Come on now. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. Here's Madison running left, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jesse Bates made the tackle from his safety spot. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? To throw is Cousins. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. The offense on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. A first down throw for Cousins. His throw incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Second and 10. Cousins. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe the routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Cousins to throw it. And that will be incomplete as well. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. Now Ritter to throw on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they've got it very deep in enemy territory. It's inside the five at the three-yard line, first and goal. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually, something else happens as well. And this time, it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. And now out comes Minnesota. And they've got it first and goal at the three. What a place to start. The 
Quite a turn of events. This is first and goal from the three. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Nikhil Harry from three yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs, and if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And Patterson not going to return this. It'll come out to the 25. Atlanta regains possession of the football. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. First down, here's Ritter. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And that's patience to be admired right there because he looks left, looks right, and waits for the right guy to come open, spots him in the middle of the field, and delivers. First down now, but that clock rolling. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. throw is going to be incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Ritter to throw it. This pass is caught by London. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 30. 23 yards the pick up there. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Ritter on first and 10. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Looking to throw once more. Here's Ritter. Looking for London on the out route complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Again, he'll drop to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. 
Back to throw again. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They'll run for it with Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A solid pickup at five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, you'll have to cut this at a tight angle. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. So three points on the board is easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. for the second half. And able to get this out to the 25. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. This offense set to begin the third quarter. And Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead. And they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also... They've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. It'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Cousins now. This goes out wide for Madison, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away off the play fake cousins 
He lets one go deep for Addison, and it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Into the hands of the rookie, Jordan Addison. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 39. 23 yards to pick up there. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. On the handoff, it's Madison. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing his Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. On first and ten, Cousins. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Not only was it a double move route, it was a dreaded post corner for any defensive back because you think that he's going all the way to the post in a deep route, and then he breaks it off to the corner. That's hard to flip your hips and get there. Well, he didn't flip them in time. Big play. Now a give to Madison. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelmed, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Now Cousins. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Osborne. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And that'll bring up a third down and goal. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Third and goal for Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Smart move to throw that one away. Your field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. Joseph's got it, and that will extend their lead here to 17-6. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Joseph now to kick this away. On the return, here's a dangerous Cordero Patterson. 
and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half and get going. Make no mistake about it though, kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get involved in the end zone. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 74 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. As always, no rooting interest here, but that was pretty, wasn't it? To see him break through and then pick up his stride. Yeah, the guy carrying the ball loves it. I think the O-line, they might like and take more satisfaction out of those runs than anybody else, though, right? Without a doubt, because they're the ones that often have created it. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw taken in by London. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. First and ten, it's Patterson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Now a second and two. Ritter now. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They're able to convert with a gain of four. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Back to Robinson now on first down. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Give the tackle there to Daniil Hunter. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Atlanta, Georgia's the spot, and glad to have you along for the ride. Third quarter action, second and 10. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Back to throw, Ritter. And he comes back with one complete. And he's not quite going to get to the marker. It'll be a gain of eight on third and ten. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. And that'll make this an eight-point game. So three points, maybe not a grand prize at this stage, but it does get them back within one score. It certainly does because now they stay within shouting distance, so that means everyone on your sideline stays engaged in this game. They know they still have a shot. kick this one away. 
This taken in right around the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Osborne motions left. Now they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Clock showing 90 seconds to go in the third. Second down, Cousins. Pass complete to Addison. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 35. That one goes for 24 yards. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. They go play action. Cousins. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Big gains in succession. Last one was over 20. This one over 30. Oh, I think we all understand his disappointment. He didn't quite get to the end zone. And you know it's just got to be tough to see a yard line underneath you after a play like that. Still, all in all, a huge play. And now they're set up first and goal at the one. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Madison diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Joseph on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. On first down, Ritter. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 
14 yards there on a Falcon first down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. Now Ritter to throw on first down. Short throw caught by Pitts. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. First down, here's Ritter. Got London on a slant. And he's got this down to the 35. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. To the air again, it's Ritter. They'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. It was a Caleb Evans hit on the stop. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Second down throw coming for Ritter. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. And the Falcons are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. So this now a nine-point difference. You figure the book here says kick the extra point, make it a one-score game. Now, you and I have seen coaches get overly aggressive in this spot, but I agree with you. Kick it here and get back within a score. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. good so that will get them back within one score a drive that time of six plays and it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception Kickoff honors following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. Escapes the defender. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. He gets it to Addison. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Now a 
dump off here complete. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll bring up second down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Catch is made by Herring. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Here's a give to Madison running right. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Play action now. Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three times in eight chances. Here it's third and two. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscle. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Brady Jarrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Now, that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. They find some open field here. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 16. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. They'll find Osborne here. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. Throwing his cousins. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got to lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? 
Cousins from the gun on third. And they're going to get it. They bring it down to sack back at the 16-yard line. Bud Dupree off the edge and getting to the quarterback. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now... As you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. Joseph now to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he will find his man on the outside. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. Ritter on first and 10. Into the hands of London. And he'll be brought down with the first down after a gain of about 11 as that takes us to the two-minute warning. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Throws right back to London, complete again. Now second and four. Now Ritter. Over the middle, caught by London. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and ten. Here's Ritter. Got a man. It's London. When you see zone defense and you know you get a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They'll come up now on second down. Ritter. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. Here's third down at five. Ritter wants to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score quickly here on first down. Here's Ritter. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the linebacker, 
Jordan Hicks. And the Vikings are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. Well, we knew this was going to be a tall order anyway, down two scores with this little time remaining, but that interception puts an end to any hopes that they had. All right, partner, work with me here because obviously scoring a touchdown, getting the onside kick, then going down, scoring again, well, that's asking a lot, isn't it? And that's really not a great expectation to begin with. I think they'll look back on this game and see what got them in this spot in the first place and say to themselves, we really gave this game away. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> Taken right around the 44. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys,